People will sell shares for a thousand reasons, Probably but they more. buy shares for one reason. So that would take them to $1.8 trillion in revenue in 20 years. That's, come, that's crazy. <laughs> Time out. All right, guys, Apple stock. Mo, I read today on Twitter that some COO of Apple just sold $30 million worth of shares. Did not now, see that. Now, guys, you got to remember, people will sell shares for a thousand reasons, Probably but they more. buy shares for one reason. What was yeah. that, Mo? Probably more reasons than a thousand. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, there's a million there's a, reasons why you sell shares. You need a, you know, estate planning. You want to pay for something. You want to buy a I don't know what the reasons are, but the point is you only buy shares for one reason, one reason only. That's to make money. Yep. Now, Apple, great company. We've talked about this company over and over. Very, very high return on invested capital. Mo, look at this little headline you have pulled up here. Yeah, this is from last week, Thursday. So they're going to invest a billion dollars per year on Apple TV studio producing no, shows. These are for movie theaters, movies. though. Really? Yeah, these are actually a billion dollars for actual movies to be released in theaters. So are they going to be putting their movies in theaters? Like, that's te- like not the Ted Lasso is a movie, but that type of thing. Yeah, that's incredible. Listen, I still love going to the movies. I don't care what anybody says. It's fun. Lisa and I really enjoy it. They're also starting to do the studio thing. They're starting. You know how Netflix has Netflix Studios. Yeah. They're starting to do that, and they're starting to buy properties. And it's rumored that the properties that they're buying are for building some type of studio to produce their movies. Right. So why are they doing this, guys? Apple. Let's pull up our software. So let's pull up Apple on our software and we'll take a, a high level look to start. We'll go a little bit bigger here. That way you guys can see. It's at 160 a share, give or take. I personally believe that Warren Buffett likes it around 140 or lower. I think that's probably accurate. But this is what Warren Buffett loves about the company. High return on invested capital. Okay. Very high return on invested capital. This means that if Apple wants to really drive a lot more profit, they don't have to invest a ton of money. As an example, Theoretically, if this were even possible, if Apple wanted to raise their profit by $38 billion, they would have to only invest $100 billion to do so. Mm -hmm. If they had a 10% ROIC, they'd invest $380 billion to do so, right? Because $380 billion times 10% is $38 billion, but $100 billion times 38% is $38 billion. Now, why does this matter so much? Well, this is what they call essentially the moat, right? Joel Greenblatt, he talks about high moat businesses. And he says the high return on invested capital is what shows you the high moat. Why? Because they don't have to invest a ton of money back in themselves to generate more profits. That's what a high moat does. The question you have to ask yourself is, what do you pay for that? What do you pay for that? And do they have the incremental ability to go out there and invest more and more money? And is it sustainable? That's the point. Is it sustainable? Can they go invest that money and get high returns on their capital to go add bottom line, stable dollars to their profit? So guys, really quick, if you like this, we have a special $7 for seven days in the software. We've only scratched the surface on it. It comes with all these tools. Check it out at everythingmoney.com. All of this $7, seven days, $1 per day. Come check it out. Now, let's go check out some some other things here. $2.5 trillion market cap. $2.8 $2.8 trillion enterprise value. This difference essentially is their net debt. Debt, cash, et cetera. All, if you want to buy the entire company with no cash and no debt, you'd pay $2.8 trillion. If you want to buy all the shares, you pay $2.55 trillion. But this shows me there's not a lot of debt in the company. All right. Gross margin, 43%. You know, they're hardware. Yeah. They make a lot of products. I think that could go up in the years coming with subscriptions. Yes. That's your, your big thing on, on, on Apple subscriptions, right, yeah. Mo? Yep. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? So I just see, you know, Apple hasn't been very innovative as far as products go, especially how they were in the beginning of the 2010, 2007 and that time. So right now, I think that they're going to be transitioning more to subscriptions, fitness, Apple Music, Apple TV. I mean, they're showing it. They're trying to get their products out to people to subscribe to their Apple TV from movie theaters. So I think subscriptions are going to be huge. I mean, I have the Apple One subscription, which encompasses everything. I love it. It's $30 a month or $35 a month. Just charges and I have everything and it's seamless. I agree with you. And and there's obviously really high margin and stickiness to that subscription, hopefully. It's so much easier to... To me, I don't have Spotify because Apple Music is just so conveniently built into everything. I was on Spotify, and then when I saw Apple One, I just switched over to Apple Music. And it's impossible for me to ever switch to Spotify because there's no way for me to just transfer all my music over. Impossible? I mean... Yeah, it's impossible. Impossible. Yeah, I'm not going to do the work to transfer 5,000 <laughs> songs. So it is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but what if, what do you mean 5,000 songs? Like if I have, I have songs downloaded on my phone, right? You have 5,000 songs downloaded Probably. on your phone. 
5,000 songs. I think there's a way to pull it up. Let me try it. I've got like literally maybe 40 songs downloaded. I just listen to the same songs over and over. All okay. right. Profit. What was that? Are you okay? Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Profit margin, 23 to 25%. Pretty consistent there. Now, guys, this is where we talk about the return on invested capital. When Warren Buffett, I think I read this recently. When Warren Buffett bought Coke back in the late 80s, he started paying about 30 times multiple of earnings. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't verified that. But his rationale was very high moat business. Very, very, very sustainable a business model. Doesn't take much money to go grow that profit. The question is, is it possible to grow it very easily? Go ahead, Mo. No, I can't, I can't figure out how to do it on the fly. I bet there's somebody out there who's like, this is what you do. So yeah, I'll put it in the comments. Yeah. So this question of this PE, is it too high? We don't know. Now, like I said, I think, I think Warren Buffett, oh, you found it? 15,804 songs. Are you kidding? That's my, I just did a select all of all my music. Jesus you can see it ranges Christ. from ASAP Rocky to Aaron Lewis. So who the hell's Aaron Lewis? Aaron Lewis is a country singer. I figured. <laughs> So at 160 versus 140, that's about a 12% difference, 13%, whatever this is. So it takes the PE down to call it 23 or so, roughly. All right. This is a very high return on invested capital. And the idea here being that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have so much money. They need to find really, really high valued companies that they can deploy tens of billions of dollars into. That's why you have this. Mm -hmm. And that's why you shouldn't look at Apple the same way Warren Buffett does. Right. All right, so let's pull up our eight pillars. Now guys, remember, if you have your software, you can do your own custom pillars right here. You can do up to 12 of them, and the, the combinations are like four trillion different combinations that you have to put the pillars in. But if you look at Apple here, we've got six check marks, and the two X's are the five-year PE and the five-year price of free cash flow. But again, yeah. is it too much or too, is it too expensive? Mo, low debt, buying back shares, it seems everything they're doing right, except it might be a little bit pricey. Yeah. So the question is, could be, could not be taking this cash flow. <clears throat> they have a 0.6% dividend yield, but because of how valuable they are as a company that pays out $15 billion a year, we typically want to see a dividend yield. That's less than 50% of the five year average free cash flow. Because remember guys, don't just trust that dividend yield, but here, of course, it's perfectly fine. Right. And for a company like Apple, especially as it drops in price, I'd rather see them take that extra free cash flow they don't need and buy back shares. Mm -hmm. Don't pay out dividends. Right. Buy back shares. Buy back as many shares as you can, as long as the price is lower and lower and lower. And what is the 52-week range on Apple? Let's look at this. A high of 180, a low of 124. Wow. 124 was only two months ago, two yeah, and a half was, months ago. Yep. First day of the year, I think. First look market at, day Look at of how year. different that is. Year to date, the stock is up 28%. Yeah, I don't know. It's the safety. You know, I saw a, a funny meme. It was, the, it was a building that was like tipping over and they put a bunch of like metal poles just holding it up and it just said Apple and this Apple was down here holding up the entire stock market. <laughs> it's true. I mean, but that's, that's why we say, that's why we say that we believe Apple will be the last one to fall. When we see people giving up on Apple and the story will be whatever the story will be. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to remember, look at the stories over the last few months. The stories have changed as the market, if the market goes up, the stories change to justify the market going up. If the market goes down or the stock goes down, the stories change to justify that. Meta at $88 a share was this company's over, it's dead, it's done. This is November of last year. Now it's, oh my God, this is so obvious. What a great company it is. They're turning them. It's like, wait, it was literally dead five months ago. Five months ago when the was price dead. was down. Yep. It was dead. And that's the hard part about being a value investor. You got to pull away the noise. Yeah. You got to sit there and say, wait a second, what's really going on here? That's the hard part about investing. So you need to pull away the curtain. You look at this, almost $100 billion in free cash flow in the last year. Yeah. It's, now it's down from last, it's down from 2021. What was 2021? 2021, it was like 101, was it? 101.85 billion. Oh my gosh, this so, company's over, it's dead. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at it and say, okay, maybe free cash flow continues to fall because it made a jump from 64 billion to 80 billion to 100 billion to 90, I mean, Maybe it starts coming back to these levels, but it's certainly not dead. Well, maybe, and also, if we have a recession, yeah, I mean, you know this, that this number's going to get hit. These are luxury items. Correct. I mean, if you have an iPad that's two years old, and there's a recession, you're going to stick with it. Yeah. All right, let's go check out the analyst estimates. And again, guys, this is all available on our software for um, at everythingmoney.com. So, look, 
They still have growth in their EPS. This is what, guys, this is what the high return on investment capital shows. Oh, wow, they still have revenue growth yeah, big time do. too, according yeah. to analysts. Wow, look at that. I mean, $8.84 here, guys. In September of 2027, keep in mind, guys, these are analyst estimates. <laughs> we don't know where they're going to go. And analysts tend to be, they tend to just go with the crowd. They want to sit there and be with everyone else because if everyone else is wrong, they can be wrong. Yep. But if everybody else is right and they're wrong, they're fired. Yeah, they're fired. <laughs> that, that's just the reality of it. They have career risk just like anybody else out there. This is a very important aspect of the company. And we're looking at revenue growth according to analysts, of up to $563 billion in 2027. All right. So I guess the next question becomes what, Mo? What do we pay for it? What do we pay for the stock? Now, Apple is the kind of company that is going to be around for a very long time. What world do we have to live in where we wake up 10 years from now and Apple's gone? It'll be bad out there. <laughs> It'll be really bad out there. I mean, they'd really have to screw up. Because not only, not only is... Apple gone, but that means that two plus billion people wouldn't be using their products anymore. They would have switched. Is it two billion people? Two billion products out there, I should say, not people. I was going to say it's like devices and everything. Yeah, devices. But I mean, that's, that's like that would, that would go for me from replacing this, this, the computer in my office, the iPad in my office. Well, it is funny. I just see on Twitter the other day another, another example of a, a screenshot from back in 2009 yeah. where it showed Blackberry. Blackberry. Like, we're still the number one. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like yeah, it was yeah. over the number of, uh, of Apple users. But again, you know, these things, uh, Apple has done a great, Blackberry didn't do, it, back then, that wasn't ready. They weren't ready for. In, uh, it's having everybody involved in the BlackBerry suite of products. Right. And they didn't create an ecosystem. Correct. That's the this thing. is an ecosystem. This is the moat that Warren Buffett loves. Yeah. This is the moat. Like for you to switch out from Apple products would take effort. Yeah, and a lot of money. A lot of money. Because you'd have to go buy a new tablet, phone, app, watch, whatever. Yep. Computer. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 20 year analysis. Mo's going to do a 10 year analysis. It's our stock analyzer tool. This is the tool we use. It was used 1.3 million times last year by our users in our community. This is the tool we use to make our assumptions about the future, which will help us, which will tell us then what price to pay for the stock today. Very simple. Now we break this down in a very, very simplistic way because I truly believe that investing should be kept as simple as possible. You know, whenever I see these Excel sheets with all these tabs and everything, I just go, time out. What's the revenue going to be? What's the profit going to be? What am I paying for that today? Once you've determined those things, you have to sit there and say, okay, well, is this a good buy or not? So we're going to do a quick pause. We're going to put our numbers in, then we're going to explain them. All right, so here are assumptions we've done. Now, I did the 20-year analysis, Mo did the 10-year. Yep. A couple things. Three, five and a half, eight percent. This eight percent growth would be very difficult over the next 20, over yes, the next 20 years. Sure. Just to let you know that would take it to, Mo, what did they do last year in revenue? They did $387.5 billion. So that would take them to $1.8 trillion in revenue in 20 years. Is it possible? Of course. Is it probable? I don't know. But that's the point of value. That's the point of any investing. You want to make conservative assumptions, but I don't mind going high. And part of the reason I like going high is if a stock is insanely overpriced, this will show me how insanely overpriced it is. Mm -hmm. If this number still comes out in red, I'm like, okay, this stock is crazy overpriced. All right. Mo, what'd you do for revenue growth? I did five, eight, and 11. Okay. So remember, Mo did a 10 year. 10 years, I did yeah. a 20 year. Got it. Profit margin. What'd you do? 23, 25, and 27. See, I went really low and I probably shouldn't have. And you're probably more right. 21, 23, 25. Now, even though subscriptions will be a higher margin business. That's why I went with that. Yeah, you're right. And this was, hey, we hit a recession. It lasts five years. Five year recession? Who knows? I mean, <laughs> we've, had, All right. we've had it. We've had a 10 year insanity cycle. Yeah. Who knows? We'll print money. All right. That's free cash flow margin. What'd you put in? Touche. 24 and a half, 25 and a half, and 26 and a half. So Mo was much tighter. I did 22, 24, 26. Yes. And then PE and price of <laughs> 16, 17, 18. I did 15, 16 and a half, 18, 15, 16 and a half, 18. And what'd you do for your returns? I did 10, 11 and 12. Look what I did. Nine, oh, wow. 11 and 13. Now, for those of you out there who are going, what? Nine? That's, come, that's <laughs> crazy. Well, guess what? If you told me right now, I already beat up Apple pretty significantly here. Yeah. So if I could buy Apple and get a 9% return with, these, with them missing on all these cylinders, I'd be pretty happy. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the idea behind Warren Buffett and his valuation. Maybe he's okay with a high single digit return. And I'm going to kind of mimic that right here. But on the high side, I need 13% return a year over here, maybe even higher to justify looking at these high numbers. Right. All right. So again, guys, we, we're going to hit the analyze button. It's going to give us a set of six numbers based on three based on earnings, low, middle, and high three based on free cash flow, low, middle, and high. Again, the software 
Seven dollars for seven days. Check it out, everythingmoney.com. I hit the analyze button and my prices are boom. Oops. Here we go. So look how high this number is. I have 80, 80 to 85 to 90 on the low side, 120 to 130 on the high side, 101 to 105 in the middle. Mo, what'd you get? I have about 100 on the low end, 130 in the middle, 170 on the high end. You can see I'm on my watch list at 130. So it's on my watch list at 125. So guys, that's where we stand. Thank you very much for your time. 